Today, climate change has become a major issue and affects the citizens of the world much more than it did a decade ago, and the concern has only intensified in the recent years. The constant, or to better term it, the ever-increasing emission of greenhouse gases due to human activities keeps making our situation graver by the day. A major part of such emission, if not the most, comes from our electrical power generation facilities. As most countries of the world still depend on coal-powered electricity generation for the most part. Coal power plants are one of the major pollutants in the world. The pollution from the coal makes the air so toxic that a vast number of diseases are associated with the pollutants emanating from the coal power plants. Asthma, cancer, lung ailments, severe neurological problems, etc. are mainly seen in patients who have either worked in coal power plants or have lived in and around them. These coal-powered plants are also responsible for global climate change. According to NASA, by the year 2100 we may be looking at the biggest migration of human beings, as many of the major cities in the world would be underwater because of the rapidly melting ice glaciers. So why are we still using coal? Here is a graph of the countries who have the highest consumption of coal in 2019. As you can see from the graph, China by far has the highest consumption of coal, consuming about 81.6 exajoules of energy, which is obtained by burning 3.89 billion tons of coal in 2019, leaving India in the distant second with 18.62 exajoules of energy. Just so you know, one exajoule is equivalent to 277,778 gigawatt hour. A typical nuclear power plant, for example, the Robert Emmett Gunney nuclear power plant in the state of New York, produces 4,689 gigawatt hour of electricity every year. Of course, this takes into consideration that most nuclear power plants do not actually operate at full capacity every hour of every day of the year. But even taking the most optimistic numbers, when it comes to producing electricity via nuclear power plants, China would need to add at least 59 more nuclear power plants in addition to the existing nuclear plants to cater to the only ever-increasing demand in electricity, provided the nuclear plants operate at extreme levels of efficiency just to replace the existing coal power plants in the country. To make a long story short, China is still using coal because it's easily available and it's inexpensive. So what's the alternative? Renewable energy, right? But the renewables have not yet reached a point where they can solely meet the demand for electrical power in their respective countries. Although we have to point out that today renewables are increasingly cheaper than coal. We made an entire video about how renewables have now become cheaper than coal. Do check the video out, we will leave the link in the description down below. The problem that plagues renewables is the intermittent supply of power. Countries like India and China have reduced their reliance on coal-powered plants, after all the two biggest solar power plants in the world is in India. But if you take a closer look, India and China still rely heavily on coal power plants, with nearly half of the electricity generated coming from coal in India, and nearly 70% of the electricity generated in China coming from coal. Both countries being large users or in some cases world leaders in building wind and solar power plants, they're acutely aware of the technological limitations in providing electricity via renewables. There is a need for a better, more efficient and emission-free way of power generation, and that is where nuclear power comes in. As compared to the coal-based power generation plants, it is undoubtedly more efficient and produces electricity without a trace of any carbon emission. Electricity from renewable energy is cheaper compared to fossil fuel plants. The maintenance costs of nuclear plants are just too small in comparison, although it has high startup and end-stage costs, and the fuel, that is uranium, does not come cheap either. We've been using nuclear power for decades now, and the incidents at Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima have made us come to the false conclusion that nuclear power itself is hazardous. But most of the hazard actually lies in uranium, the radioactive fuel being used to generate most nuclear power. Uranium is the only element that is deemed fit to be used as nuclear fuel in today's date because power generation facilities had been designed to work around the properties of uranium, dating back to the Cold War days as the residue from uranium had the potential to be made into nuclear weaponry. The energy that could be generated from uranium was only a byproduct back then and the main focus was on the highly reactive plutonium that could be obtained to use as nuclear explosives later. So does that mean there's just no other way to go about it? Absolutely not. When it comes to radioactive elements that can be used for nuclear power generation, there's always been two names from the times of the Cold War, namely uranium and thorium. The element thorium is named after the Scandinavian god of thunder, Thor, who we've come to know and love in recent years. And it sits just two places away from uranium on the periodic table. 
Thorium is a great alternative to uranium, which only got the green signal to be used as nuclear fuel due to its potential to be weaponized, and we'll see why it's a better option. Thorium is cheaper than uranium as it's about 500 times as abundant in concentration. Also, thorium is available directly in a fissile form, unlike uranium, and that saves the cost of fuel enrichment and also that for the handling of nuclear waste. The use of thorium as a nuclear fuel provides a safer work environment. Thorium reactors are called LFTRs, commonly pronounced as lifters, which stands for liquid fluoride thorium reactors, as they use a mixture of thorium and fluoride salts to power a reactor and are far safer than typical nuclear reactors. And it's actually possible to start and stop the reactions at will, as TH-232 is naturally not as reactive and only starts to react when it's bombarded by neutrons that turn into the highly reactive TH-233 and stops as the bombardment of neutrons is stopped. The lifters function at low pressure and provide more safety. Any increase in temperature will only cause minor increases in pressure due to the high boiling points of the fluoride salts. It makes the reactors air cooled and reduces the chances of containment explosions. The fuel is almost wholly consumed and leaves less radioactive waste, as U-235 can be extracted from it and used in conventional nuclear reactors, making the lifters self-sufficient. Today, Thorium is considered only a byproduct of uranium extraction and is cheaply available, making it quite an inexpensive nuclear fuel along with the fluoride salts. To run a 1 gigawatt thorium based power generation facility, the total amount of required fuel would approximately cost $5 million, which is significantly cheaper than conventional light water power plants. Thorium as a fuel is quite efficient, and naturally, the thorium based plants are too. One ton of thorium can produce a power output that equals that of 35 tons of uranium and 4 million tons of coal. Thorium reactors themselves are about 20% more efficient than conventional nuclear reactors functioning at 45-50% to 50 efficiency under ideal conditions. Several countries throughout the world have started working on making thorium reactors a reality, as many countries like India and China have commercialized thorium. India, the leader in the commercialization of thorium, had even envisioned meeting 30% of the country's total demand for electrical power through thorium reactors by 2050, in 2012. Although we still have a long way to go in order to make thorium-based electrical power generation mainstream because of numerous factors such as the lack of research on thorium reactors, the lack of facilities that extract uranium-235 from thorium reactor waste, decrease in the cost of setting up renewable power generation facilities and also the lack of public awareness on the superiority of thorium as a nuclear fuel, there's still much hope for it to come into reality in the near future. Given that we understand that the pros more than outweigh the cons when it comes to using thorium as a nuclear fuel. So we'll leave it right here. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe for more awesome content. See you guys next time.